Welcome to Women and Themes. I am Kemi Oshukoya. Unlike today, when most high end fashion, including avant garde from famous fashion designers, are worn by both movie stars and as well as first ladies, back in the 50s and 60s, only a handful of prominent designers can boast of dressing American first lady movie stars, and everyday women. Among those pioneer elite designer is a French designer named Pierre Cardin, known for his classic and unconventional style, and interplay between art, technology, and science that continue today to push boundary of contemporary fashion, captivating and giving not only our highs, but our imagination tantalizing experiences. A new exhibition dedicated to his work is now on view at the Brooklyn Museum through January 2020. The show, organized chronologically, is mesmerizing. In a rare interview, the brand general manager and here a parent Mr. Rodrigo Akadan spoke with us. So, talk to me about your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I met him uh, when I was 22, one time, when uh, the, the town of his, when he, where he's born, uh, gave him the key, the key of the town, you know, because uh, to celebrate his work. Oh. And I was there with his brother, my grandfather. Uh, I was living with him. Uh, I never. I never seen him, him just when I was eight, but I didn't remember. So finally, it was like uh, coup de foudre. It's, uh, it's like um, a very good impression he did me. There, is, there was a defile, and he explained me for the first time what he thinks about about uh, uh, clothes and about uh, creation in his sense. Well, well what and did he, he said, tell you? He said. He said. You know, you know, this is the glass of uh, champagne. The glass is the is my my costume, my, my clothes, and the champagne is a woman. For him, uh, the woman ha can be can be how she she want physically. Important is the sculpture outside. That is good, a good sense of uh, creation, and I follow it, it from that moment. And now I follow him from 25 years. You've been working with him for 25 yes, all years? Yes, all days. I stay between Venice and, uh, and Paris, but oh. more in Paris now, because, you know, it is 97 now. Uh, he's very smart, but uh, I can help sometimes him. And uh, I have to think about the future of the house uh, going on in this sense, in his sense, because uh, he learned me, he teach me uh, not exactly how to do, but the, 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 the exact sense of his way to do, you know. I hope, I hope to interpret it well. Okay, so what, you, you've been working with him for quite a while now. Uh, what is the most important thing that you learned from him? He is uh, sincere, and he is sincere. Sincere. Okay, by heart uh -huh. and by design and everything he did, he is sincere with himself, coherent all the time, and he likes to work more than travel, more than make vacations. So his vacations, his uh, uh, best thing in the world is to work, to draw. So you can imagine 70 years of work, nobody, nobody did. So he still remain very creative. Very creative. When I wake up in the morning and I, I say I take with him a, a breakfast uh, on the table in front of his, his bedroom, there are a lot of design, different from the day before. <laughs> you can imagine he he told me that he wake up in the night more more than one time and he, he wrote something he he, he, he preferred to draw and to fix these ideas during the night. Okay. It's incredible. So what is it like to translate those ideas into reality 
for you. What is it, you know, when, when you pick up those designs to now translate it into what some of ah, what we is, see? Uh, very, you know, Cardin is uh, uh, able to do what he drew. So in the morning, for example, sometimes I did with, I did it for it. We go up to the fifth floor uh, where there are uh, the mannequin. You know? Mannequins. Okay. <laughs> uh, so he he starts to 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 put on uh, little tissues in the form it cut like a sculpture, very fast. And uh, at ten o'clock when when the guys arrive to. to Work, yeah. they see and they started to and start to, to working on it. And two, three days after, they show him what the things, <laughs> Mr. Cardin, and he say, no, that you have to cut a little here. That that's very very fast. He likes to translate fast his ideas. His ideas. Yes. So what should we look forward to? Well, regarding the Cardin now house, what should we? What should the public and the fans? What should they look forward to? What are you working on for the future? We have to maintain his uh, fundamental ideas. Um, he was the first to socialize the, the fashion, finally. And he wanted, it from the beginning, I say, from the beginning, that everybody could dress uh, something that you can recognize. This is Cardan. This is... Now it's not possible to say the same for the other. But Cardin is Cardin, and you can recognize just with with one second. And this is uh, important to to go on in this sense. When we make we will make a creation, uh, we had to remember it just after one second that they saw that we saw the, the piece, the masterpiece. You know, okay. I think it's the, it's important to maintain that and don't go to. To, to work on the little particular. Kierkegaard is great ideas, one maximum two ideas in one creation. That is that's all, and I have to go on in this sense. Okay. Maybe with different forms. He likes geometry, perfect geometry. I like curb, curbs in general, uh, and so geometry, and with with something invented curb. This is a little difference between me and him. But uh, he likes, so I, I, I make confidence in myself. So you will be combining your own creativity, your own idea, with his idea. See, uh, he transferred something in 25 years of working with him. <laughs> transferred, even if I don't want, I didn't want, but I wanted. Uh -huh. So uh, now it's part of me. Some, a lot of things, okay. and I believe in this part of things. Okay. So uh, I don't remember when I became like that, but now I am, and I have some little difference, but little difference, and not about the concept, general concept, okay. just uh, some curb. I have another another bit of sensibility. I could make something that different, but he likes what I do. That is make me. Confidence. Okay. How challenging is it for you to do to accomplish that? Is it easy for you to do? No, uh, you've started, been doing I it. I started a few years ago with glasses, for example. He likes a lot of glasses, the furniture. Yeah. And there is one of them, the sunset, with the sun, with the that try to to go down on the sea. Okay. Is there? I'm very happy that. Okay. work is here. My uncle, when they saw it, he said, ah, that's fantastic, do it. Okay, you know, so... This is Pierre Cardin and Rodrigo, it's okay. perfect. Okay. Uh, my last question to you is, your, your uncle was very innovative when it comes to, in terms of uh, gender, and in terms of, uh, you know, creation, in, in terms of, in the 60s, it was ahead with the space suit, and technology and design. So to see this exhibition put together, what does it mean for you? One thing to say is that the most difficult things in the future of House of Cardin is to stupefy people, like he did before in 70 years, every year. That is the most difficult project to, to assume. But uh, now I saw the exposition very quick, <laughs> and uh, it is fantastic. I have to say that Matthew, the organizer, the, uh, he, he interpreted perfectly. 
the, the way to, to think of Pierre, uh, the majesty of some of some of his work. Um, but in the, his life, my uncle was uh, very fast. So when he finished a creation, he, he started to think to the, the next one, and he doesn't want to copy the past, even if it is himself. You can understand it, and this is garden. Okay, you can recognize, but with uh, never. Uh, never reminding what he did and that's the, the second difficult thing don't copy the past look forward to the look, future exactly. and that's what you're doing that is or, or what you're trying to do that is the, my anxiousness but maybe not I'm happy to do it what Cardano has created inspired Matthew Jokoboski, the senior curator of fashion and material culture at the Brooklyn so Museum. So talk to us, what is it like putting this exhibition together? Well, what was extraordinary about this exhibition was that we had a full access to Pierre Cardin's archive. And so we were able to go in and bring out objects that people haven't ever seen and uh, well especially since they were on the runway so you know sometimes things come out on the runway and then they go away and never see again but Pierre Cardin kept everything so we were able to make an original exhibition that really showed the 70 years of creation and um, innovation in innovation in everything from hemlines to new materials so again, well, going just going through all those uh, collection. Well, what is that? Talk to us about our experience for you. Well, I when this <laughs> as somebody that has been, you know, this is what you do. Well, so what is that experience like? Yes. So with Mr. Cardan, you know, he agreed to do the exhibition. So I met him and. Uh, we had a really wonderful conversation and he said, yes, please show him the archives, you know, so they open up doors and I would walk in, it would be like a me, you know, be like Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> it was amazing. So, uh, it was a, a, a difficult job because there were so many things that I liked, you know, so how do you decide which things that you think are best, you know? But with Mr. Cardin, a lot of the, he began as a tailor. And so, unlike a lot of uh, clothing that you see on the runway, his clothing, when you open it up inside, is all finished. Every piece is just gorgeous in terms of the sewing. Um, and that comes from starting out as a tailor. So, I think. For me, it was a very difficult job to go through all of the clothes because I think we could have had like, you know, 20 exhibitions <laughs> because I would like to see everything, you know, so this is the tip of the iceberg. So when you were going through those collections, what, what, what was the idea in mind? What, what were you thinking that, okay, this is what I want the focus of the exhibition to be this is what i want to give to the audience yes. whoa, whoa, whoa. well for me one of the main things was to show the entire chronology there's not many artists that are 97 and still working so i thought it was very important that we show what a 70-year fashion career looked like um, so i knew i wanted to do that uh, in chronology at the beginning and then focus in on specific moments you know, his iconic Cosmo Core collection, which was his first collection where he was blurring between men's clothes and women's clothes. The moments when he was making clothes with new fabrics, like the uh, Cardin fabric, which could be molded with heat mold. Um, and then also I loved after the clothes that he made after he visited NASA. And they became much more about motion. So he designed the kinetic dress. So when you spin it, a whole dress moves. And those are things that you know are iconic in his career. But then you find surprises, you know, like he did clothes that had lights in them that blinked, you know, and um, he did a whole, you know, many collections of evening wear.
which he said his evening wear was based on when you look up at the heavens and see the stars, he wanted women to look like they were wearing galaxies. Mm -hmm. So they had rhinestones and beautiful materials on them so that when the woman walks through space, she sparkles like the sky. <laughs> and, and, and speaking of uh, celebrating women, I know, uh, you know, we, Right now, there is a question about gender equality and uh, pay parity. And walking through the museum and even talking to the muse is somebody that for decades have celebrated women. Well, 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 what is your opinion about that, given what is going on in our society right yes. now? Well, you know, he was somebody who early on was thinking about equality in dress, you know, and he was, he was of course, at the beginning of that conversation, and I think experimented to see what would work, you know, so his body stockings that you would wear a vest over, or he made women's skirts short, but men's vests long, so that the vests and the skirts were almost the same length, you know. <laughs> And it created a little bit of a confusion, you know. And I think in our culture, where today we're trying to move away from binary conversations to a multiple uh, conversation, um, that the blurring of genders is very important to consider in terms of future design, you know. Um, of course, everyone has anatomy. You know, and of course we all pick our own clothes. You know, we live in a country where we can choose what hairstyle or what jewelry we want to wear, you know, so we can individualize. But I think there's a lot of necklaces and different things that both men and women could wear. And we participate in gender neutral dressing without really thinking about it. Yeah. And it seemed to be one of, the, I, I, I was walking through the exhibition and saw one of the dresses that Naomi Campbell wore. Yes. It was one of the um, fashion designer that also included women of color yes, as, 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 his, as his model. Can you talk about that? Yes, oh absolutely. You know, in 1957 he made his first trip to Asia and he, would, he taught at the um, academy for uh, three-dimensional uh, fashion design and he met the model Hiroko and he for three years he would write her notes and say you should come to Paris so eventually Hiroko came to Paris and she became uh, one of the first uh, Asian models to be on a European runway and then he just continued. He, he was working in China and India, and then he was working with American models like Pat Cleveland, you know, and Naomi Campbell. And I think when you think about Pierre Cardin, he really wanted to embrace the whole world with his clothing. He always said, I want to dress the world. <laughs> so if you're going to dress the world, you want to include beautiful models from every country in your collections. And uh, talk to us a bit about it, uh, his influence on fashion, on well, modern day fashion. Yes. And know, technology. And technology. You know, I, I think that it's interesting when you have a designer that's interested in science. You know, a lot of designers are mostly, you know, a lot of designers will tell you, I was inspired by flowers, I was inspired by birds. But Pierre Cardin was interested in technology and outer space, which are like unusual for uh, a fashion designer. So he designed the computer coat, where the back of it looks like the fan on the inside of a computer. You know, he designed uh, some of the scale vests, where it's all angular. And if you look at a lot of his work, it's about mathematics. Something like this, for example. Yes, this is called, called the butterfly dress and it's based on parabolas, which is both a shape that you see in outer space as well as a shape that you see in science. So I think he's very innovative in that way. 
Okay. So what do you hope for audiences that come to see this? What are you hoping that they will take out? Um, both older and younger, younger generation, what are you hoping that they will take away? Well, you know, one of the things I would like people to take away is the fact that if you are busy throughout your whole life and you'll live to be 97 like Pierre Cardin, <laughs> you know, he didn't retire, he just kept designing. And I think that's a life lesson for all of us. But I think in terms of design, I think you want to remember how much he did for gender neutral dressing, uh, in, in trying to create equality through dressing, that people were, were in, you know, he rarely had women in heels, you know, they would be in mostly flat shoes, and a short skirt so that mo women can be more mobile, you know, she can be out in the workforce, and it's things like that that help uh, make the future uh, better for everyone. So, I, hopefully, uh, Mr. Cardin has helped in that uh, direction. In fact, Cardin's design in the 60s is nothing short of perfection and continued to remain so even by today's standard and was at the forefront of the convergence of so fashion tell me and why technology. Was it important for you to sponsor this exhibition at this particular period? I think uh, overall the Chargers company is really in the convergence of fashion, art, technology. We're in the forefront of the museum business as well, obviously fashion. And um, this is really a great opportunity for us to bring Pierre Cardin into the U.S. Okay. Talk to me a little bit about the influence on, on fashion in general. Well, as you know, Pierre Cardin is such a major influencer, you know, for so many decades, um, starting with Jackie Kennedy's outfits all the way through to um, Star Trek. Um, I think as you see his, the exhibition through the move of uh, the various decades, you will see his influence. And not only that, his progressive thinking, as well as just truly being innovative, is truly a, a, an aspiration to, to us all in the yeah. fashion industry. There's a form of um, technology that is sort of incorporated into the fashion. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, if you're looking at his futuristic collection, yeah. you will see that for yourself. <laughs> um, I think we have all, some of us may have grew up with Star Trek and the, and, and the, the, uh, the mixed media pieces with the metal and, and truly a futuristic, innovative thinking behind it. Um, I think he had made a huge influence over several decades. In terms of technology and how technology and fashion sort of incorporate together, can you talk a little bit more about sure, that? Sure, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, in today's world, uh, is, is technology is such a huge influence in the way we live day to day and by building technologies and um, into our clothing and ready to wear, there's this function, there's a performance, there's a quality to it that um, if, if you look at what Pierre Cardin has done and he truly had the vision of where the future should be even with fashions. And now uh, in particular do you have any favorites in this exhibition? Do we have any? Do you have any particular one, any favorite? My anything? Favorites? Yeah. <laughs> well I think it's Depending on the mood of the day, I think I will go from Jackie Kennedy's suits all the way through to the um, Star Trek outfits, as well as some of the uh, more Studio 54 influence items as well. <laughs> Not only has he left his imprint on contemporary fashion and design through his expanded brand, he revolutionized the fashion business industry when he licensed his name on his clothing line. First important creation that my uncle did in 51, he started in 50, he's opened up when he was 28, his house in 50, 1950. 51 he did that, and an American distributor and producer uh, say, I would like to distribute 200,000 pieces of that. And my uncle said, uh, okay, we will see tomorrow. He couldn't do it. 
but he say I do just 200 and you make the rest and I explain how you to do and I permit you to put my name and so uh, at the back I invented the, the license for the first time in the world you know he did it and glad thanks to that even now at 97 years old continue to inspire others with his creativity and work ethics redefining to all of us what aging means well pierre cardin is a very simple man his favorite his big drug in life is working and he says the key to happiness is to work he's just he's constantly going and looking at new things and trying to create for tomorrow he's and an amazing man you've been in the you've been in the industry for quite a while how rare is that to have somebody like that in the industry the reason i've been with him now for 23 years is because he's easy to be with He's easy to approach, to talk with, to share ideas, to give him ideas, to, to discuss things with. He's not in a, you know, an, up in a, a tower that you can't reach. He's very accessible. Very accessible to, to everyone. Oh, to everyone. Everyone that has questions and wants to see him, they can go to him and ask him questions. And what is it like working with you? You work with him, and also you work with his nephew. Well, well, what is yes. that like? Rodrigo, They're... Rodrigo is a wonderful man, and he's taken over. He loves his uncle, and he respects his uncle. Pierre Cardin. The one thing about him is he doesn't belong to any banks. He belongs to himself. He's a he's the last of the major titans of the fashion world of the Christian Dior's and all those that have sadly passed on. But Pierre keeps going because he remains young and looking towards tomorrow. Rodrigo is his nephew, and he has been, you know, passing his ideas, and they've been working together um, hand in hand. I would say for the last 20, 23 years, maybe oh, 20, 25 years. years. 25 years. Yeah. And so Rodrigo respects his uncle and wants to continue the House of Cardan, following the, the desires and the wishes and the creation of his uncle. Again, you know, given that. All the industry, not only the fashion industry, you have a uh, major corporation that are buying those right. companies and are changing a lot of things. So how real is that in, in, in your industry right now? He's the only one. He's the only one that does not belong to a big group and you know, all the marriages and, li and alliances that are made with, with LMVH and all the other companies and the banks. Pierre Cardin is his own banker. He still does his accounting the old-fashioned way, looking at the ledger. And then <laughs> when he wants to invest, he goes and looks at what he has, and he goes, let's do this. So what, what can young designers, what can they learn from that? What can they learn from that? Well, first of all, it's a history lesson because no one works like that except for Pierre Cardin anymore. <laughs> but it also it comes, brings things back to it on a human level, I, I think. This is my, my personal take. It's a very simple way, and so you, most of your energy as a young designer would be spent creating rather than talking to commissions and board meetings and all these other people to get their opinions before you step forward. Pierre Cardin creates, and then he goes and looks at his ledger when he has to do his accounting. But it's, it's a passing thing for him. So it's the old fashioned way of doing things that, that remain more sustainable. Sustainable and human. And human. Above all, I would say human. Okay. So just walking through the, mm -hmm. uh, the museum here, well, well, just looking through everything, do you have any favorites? Or like a... Oh, there are some pieces that I hadn't seen. I mean, because I have worked very often with René Taponier, who is the curator for the Pierre Cardin Museum in Paris. And so many of these pieces I have seen because we did expose some of these pieces as well in Newport, Rhode Island in 2017, and then in Atlanta at the Scat Fash. But Matthew has done a beautiful job and chosen a line based around the Cosmonote collection, which I've seen fewer pieces of, I would say. And there are some pieces with the Jacqueline Kennedy War that I, hadn't, I had never seen because, of course, that's from a different museum that belongs to different collections. But uh, here at the Brooklyn Museum, they've done a wonderful job of finding old archives and it was fun to see the Jetsons cartoon. <laughs> I mean, it's my American culture as a young kid here in America, but um, so there are some things that I hadn't seen. So I would say those catch my eye more. Now, to answer your question, what is my favorite? Oh, do you have any I favorite? Don't really, no, because uh, I'm constantly amazed at, this, at the, the forms that he creates, the way that he changes the body form, but yet at the same time, the one thing I've always heard from clients is that it's always comfortable. It's 
he doesn't allow, you know, he doesn't take your breath away and put you, tie you up into a, you know, a merry widow or things like that. I'm sure he could if, if he had a client that wanted something like that. But his clothes are comfortable to wear. So, it, it, you know, also one other thing that I've noticed with his clothing, and one thing that I was so ahead of his time, is the unisex form. Yes. And, you know, we're talking about gender equality right now, or gender inclusion. Yes. So, what is your opinion about that? I think it's amazing. I also think that Pierre Cardin, I know Pierre Cardin, was the first, first um, fashion designer to hire models of color, Indian, black, Japanese, Chinese, to him, human beauty was human beauty, period. And all the colors of the rainbow are wonderful. So he was the first person, Naomi Campbell has said it in the film, uh, mentioned that as well in the film that's just being finished called House of Cardin, which is a, a feature film on his whole life. When would that be out? That's going to be shown worldwide. It's being sold into many countries already. It's just the final editing is being done right now. It should be premiered hopefully this year. Oh, okay. Tell us about what we have in here. What you have in here is Pierre Cardin inspiration. A lot of it is the circle ideas here and also the new materials because he worked a lot. He loved when all the new materials came out, whether it was vinyl, lycra, um, plastics. Everything inspires him. And I can tell you one thing, when you're riding in a car with Pierre Cardin, he's like a 97-year-old child because he's, his eyes pop out as he's looking out the window of the car saying, look at that, look at this, look at that. Everything is ins everything inspires him, and I think that's why it keeps him young. And now, uh, given that we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of mankind walking to the moon, I mean, putting these together, it's such an amazing thing. And it is. his idea, even the, the glasses and the furniture, like he's so ahead of his time, oh, so totally futuristic. Absolutely. And but at the same time, it's still very relevant. Um, 50 years later. Well, one of his favorite expressions is, my favorite dress that journalists always ask me, they say, of all these beautiful and crazy models that you've created, which one is your favorite? And he always answers, the one I'm creating tomorrow. As history has shown us, simplicity is at the core of creativity and innovation is the disconstruction as well as the foundation of complex things, including math, science, technology, and art, all of which take their clue from nature. Perhaps we can learn a thing or two in this modern day of constant digital stimulation. Let us remember to take time to appreciate I enjoy the simple things that we often take for granted, like our loved ones, or the beauty that nature has bestowed upon us. That's the end of this episode. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch previous episodes. Also, check out our website, theafricabazaar.com. Until next time, Remember, stay open to new experience, get involved in your community, and encourage one another. I am Kemi Oshukoya. I will see you next time.